class is starting. Everyone sing that same sound, please. That's how we begin. And that way we can all be together. Together. Good. All right. Now, everyone looking up this way, we're going to be studying about repetition today. Repetition in music. We've been learning, your math teacher and English language arts teacher and I, we've been learning together with you how these subjects that you study here at school interact with one another. They relate to each other. They integrate. They have a lot in common. And one of those phenomenon they share with one another is repetition. There's repetition in math, there's repetition in English language arts, and there's repetition certainly in music. And last night, you had a flipped classroom assignment, and you were to watch one of the YouTube videos suggested, and then come back today and share with us what you recall as far as this feature of repetition is concerned. Let's see who uh, watched the video last night. Let's go with Ryan. Okay, Ryan, what did you, uh, what did you watch last night? You watched... The Bolero? Okay, good. Maurice Ravel's Bolero, French composer Maurice Ravel. What did you notice that was so repetitive throughout the whole thing that you heard as you listened to that entire piece? What did you notice? Right. The snare drum, beginning at the piece of music at the start, is... And it goes on and on and on and on. That same pattern all the way throughout that snare drum. Imagine being the snare drum player and having to play the same notes over and over and over and over and over again all the way throughout that whole piece. But he did. Okay, good. Good observation. Very good, Ryan. Let's go with uh, Joe. Okay, Joe, what did you watch? Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. You watched um, John Williams perform with the Boston Symphony Orchestra his music from the movie Jaws. And what did you notice, right? You heard that jaw thing coming up, right? The shark and the repetitive nature, just those two tones. Da da ba da ba da ba da. And that's very repetitive, isn't it? Okay, cool. Now, after we're done with our little talk here, we're going to uh, give you guys a chance to write up just a brief little paragraph what you watched what you observed, and your reflection on the repetitive nature of the music that you listened to, whether it was Ravel's Bolero, uh, Grieg's Morning Suite, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, Bach's Toccata and Fugue in D minor, or uh, John Williams' Jaws that Joe watched. Okay? Either of those, you can write that up. It's going to be great. I expect you to have good punctuation, good grammar, spelling, all that kind of stuff with that little thing. I expect several sentences, at least a good paragraph. Okay? Let's move on. And we're going to talk now about repetition in music and a, uh, a song that you are very, very familiar with. In fact, one that you grew up with. When you were in kindergarten or preschool, you knew this song. And it's classical music. In fact, it was written by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, the composer of the classical period, sometimes known as Viennese classical because he lived in Vienna. He and Beethoven and others were part of the classical period of Western music. And he wrote this tune that you knew when you were in kindergarten. And it's called in this particular song here, Mozart Melody, written by Mozart. And if you wanted to learn your ABCs, you sang this song. If you wanted to learn Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, you knew this song. And it went like this. Sorry about that. Notice that the melody has just these seven notes in it. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 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 Count them with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right. Seven quarter notes. These are called quarter notes. Those black things with the sticks on them. Seven quarter notes. And the first part is very similar to the last part. In fact, it's identical. If we were to call this first melody the A melody, we would have it back down here again, wouldn't we? And it repeats again down here. It's the same thing, isn't it? Exactly the same. A and A. The melody is repeated. In the second line, it's a little bit different. Ta 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 ta. We have the seven quarter notes, but they're arranged differently. The pitches, the tune, is arranged differently. Ta 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 ta. That's repetitive, isn't it? Very repetitive. How did you learn your ABCs so quickly? How did you learn that Twinkle Twinkle Little Star song so quickly? How do you learn anything so quickly? Because it's repetitive. It's repetitive. It's repetitive. And I tell my students, here's three lines of music. You think, oh no, I have to learn three lines of music. No, you don't. You only have to learn the first four measures, and you'll know the last four measures, and so forth. So this is how it works. Music is very repetitive in nature. And if you keep that in mind, you'll understand why some songs are so easy to remember. And beautiful music is repetitive in its nature. It's a tune. It's something you can take with you and sticks. And that's why these kind of tunes, such as the ones you've listened to in the Flip Classroom videos and even this twinkle twinkle thing here, that's why it's classical. It'll be around forever because it is memorable. It is memorable. Let's try twinkle twinkle little star together everybody and then we'll be done. Here you go. Twinkle twinkle little star how I wonder what you are up above the world so high like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. You knew that when you were in kindergarten, now you know that it has roots in classical music. Isn't that wonderful? Rep repetition in music. Okay, go ahead and uh, get your, uh, your books out now, your paper and things, uh, type up something whatever your format is, and get that written response turned in before the end of the period. We have about 15 more minutes left. Thank you.